Today we're going to review the design for a universal dust shoe that you can customize for just about any CNC router or spindle. To get things started, I'll download the Fusion 360 design file from our project page. And create a new design from file using the file that I just downloaded. And first thing I'll do is I'll save it and give it a name that's meaningful to me. The dust shoe itself consists of an upper frame and lower frame. The upper frame attaches to the spindle or router and the dust collector hose, and the lower frame holds a strip brush. While the magnets are retained by counterbore features in the top shoe half. This was modeled from the ground up, intending to support as many routers and spindles as possible. Therefore, customization is fairly straightforward. Spindle diameter is what controls the interface between a router or a spindle. The goal is a tight fit with a minimum of clamping action needed to lock the dust shoe to the router. We can also update the design to use 2.5 inch hose if that's what we have available. Most will use 4 inch. In either case, we want to undersize them a little bit to make sure it's easy to get the hose on. The next design parameter is the hose offset. This controls the distance between the hose interface and the router or spindle mount interface. 5 inches is usually sufficient. For those needing a little extra reach, 5.5 may clear electrical connections on the spindle better. I can hit OK and we can tumble around the updated model and see that everything is still where it should be, just uh, updated per the design parameters that have affected the underlying sketches. I'm going to set the hose diameter back to 4 inches and go update my tool pass for this customized dust shoe. Switching to the cam workspace, I have two project setups. I have a brush frame, which is the lower frame, and the top frame. I'll hit Control G on these to regenerate the tool pass. And walking through these, after the adaptive clearing, we have a 2D pocket for the magnets, a pocket for the interface for the hose and the spindle. And the last operation we have is a cutout. And I'll turn on the sketch to show the trace. So this is what's going to create the friction lock fingers. As you can probably tell at this point, the model itself is built from sketches that are linked to each other through parameters. So if you'd like to understand the design in more detail, that's a good place to start in the modeling workspace and look at the various sketches. Switching to the lower frame, we can see that the first operation, a pocket, is going to create the channel for the brush strip. We're using a 1 8 inch end mill for this operation because the channel needs to be slightly smaller than a quarter inch in width. Then we switch back to a quarter inch end mill and do the inside pocket, the magnet holes, and the 2D contour that will cut out the lower frame itself. You can see from the toolpath preview that I've included tabs. If this was a vacuum setup or double sided tape, I would remove the tabs and I can just go in and uncheck tabs under the geometry selection for that operation. And I can do the same thing for the top frame, go under geometry and unselect tabs. All right, I'm ready to generate my G-code. I'll select top frame and hit post process, making sure that CNC router parts is selected. I'll uncheck open in the file editor and save this to my local file system. And repeat the same steps for the brush frame. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our follow-up videos showing you how to make these dust shoes on and for our CNC machines.